It's the coveted uh, last slot before everybody leaves uh, the conference. So, um, so we'll get started. Um, I, th I think most of you know who OSISoft is, uh, Pi, uh, the software, et cetera. One slide uh, about that, and I'm not going to go into the, the details there. So what I wanted to do was give you some thoughts around uh, when we break into teams, some ideas and some thoughts are, uh, to think of. So I wanted to start just real simply with what is operational data. And, um, you know, it, it goes all the way from the raw materials, mobile equipment, manufacturing, processing, transport to customers, right? And it's also in the today sensors, the dispatch, GPS labs. Also, historically, process control, the HMI, SCADA, PLCs, this is where a lot of the data comes from. And in particular, we spend, OSISoft does a lot in this world where there's the time series data, right? So there's a, let's say a pump, the real-time data is coming from that, it's measuring the pressure, the temperature, the vibration, et cetera, every second, half second, whatever, pulling that data and assembling that somewhere so somebody can do something with it. Okay, um, I say real-time or past in the sense of you've now put a sensor on and you've got all this, you're starting to collect all this data, but people have, who have, again, with process control or SCADA systems, they've been doing this for a long time. They might have 25, 30 years worth of data already in the past. It's a challenge to both manage it, but then be able to do something with it. Okay, and we, we do talk about digital transformation, but there are still places where the data is coming in manually. Either it's too expensive to put a sensor or some piece of equipment, not reliable to do it that way, and you still have manual. A again, you know, is that going to be real time? Probably not. But, you know, you might need that data to help you make some decision, and maybe sending somebody out there every half hour is still the best you can do. And it is definitely in addition to the business data, right? So the whole ITOT, uh, the distinction I'll make there is just if you think on the ERP side, you've got your customer information, you might have your recipes and formulas. That's not generally what we think of when we think of operational data. Okay? So, um, Actually, my colleague, uh, Mike Dudzik, was here er in the earlier session, asked a question. He's from a steel company, ArcelorMittal DeFasco. So, you know, you, you, you say, so where is the operational data here? Um, the answer is, of course, it's going to be everywhere. Um, where is it now? It's, you know, in the expensive equipment where they've got process control and SCADA and so on. Again, historically where it's been, but now they're starting to put sensors and other uh, pieces of collection, inexpensive ones where they can get more data. But this is a, for an industry that's been around for a long time, this is a big deal. Uh, and he, in particular, and other steel companies and pulp and paper companies, they wrestle with this all the time of, you know, how much automation, how much sensors, et cetera, can they put on there in, in some of these cases in climates that, you know, aren't conducive to putting that kind of equipment as in a furnace, as in, you know, some other chemical operation where, you know, it'll, <laughs> it'll uh, kill the sensor within, you know, a few minutes. Okay. Um, another example, operational data in natural gas, same thing. I mean, where is it? We tend to think, I think, historically of in the factory, in the manufacturing uh, process, but you know, what's the process here? This is spread along, you know, with the lines, uh, pipelines, gas lines, et cetera. There's going to be operational data everywhere. And if you talk to some of these companies, they're starting to put, of course, sensors, you know, whatever the frequency is, every half mile, every third mile, et cetera, to be able to, to figure out um, what's going on in the pipelines. And, and we have some really interesting um, customers that are doing this on the water side, uh, there's a really good story that we have with the, uh, I think it's called the White House uh, Water District in Tennessee, where, you know, they started putting sensors on and realized that they were losing a lot of water to leaks. And in fact, the, the, one of the 
parts of the, the story that's really good is there was a part in the city that had a, everybody thought it was a natural stream. It actually was a leak in the pipeline. <laughs> and, you know, it took them to go out there and put some sensors on it to figure that out. Okay, so, so when we talk about this operational data, this real-time data coming from the equipment, every, like I said, whatever the frequency is and measuring all of these variables, there's some unique challenges. The first is there could be a lot of it. You know, you could have a pump and you could have perhaps 100 streams, different variables that you're collecting. Uh, I, I just mentioned a few, temperature, pressure, et cetera, um, but there could be a lot of them. And think of if it's coming every half second, it's gonna be a lot of data. And uh, again, I'll give you another example in uh, aluminum, which is where I started my career. Um, Alcoa is monitoring well over a million of these streams of data in their smelting process throughout the plant with maybe 4,000, 5,000 on each one of their main pieces of equipment. Didn't start out that way, maybe started out with a couple of hundred, but as they got into it, they started collecting more data. Okay, um, this is an, a, another issue I think as you think about design is, the, the, we call it the context, but it's you know, adding the metadata to it. So you've got, a, you've got this uh, timestamp, you've got this uh, piece of equipment, you got a value and you got a, uh, the attribute and the value, but it'd be great to have some additional information like what product were you running at that time? What was the state of the, you know, the manufacturing process and so on? And we've heard this throughout the conference of you know, adding context and where do you add the context and so on. Okay, um, this data is also sequential, right? It's time that is really the index here, so you need to make sure you've got that in it and that you can understand, for instance, the temperature is rising and these individual data points don't mean much without that information. And then we'll talk more, I think this is another consideration of uh, who's accessing it and the nature of the decisions they're making, whether that's real time, whether it's operational, whether it's a, more of a strategic decision, but there are different time frames over which people make de decisions which influence then the type of data, where it is, what you do with it. Okay, so um, I think if you've been in this for a while, they talk about the three Vs, right? The volume, variety, and velocity. The, the numbers are, they're just going up pretty quickly. Um, and no, I didn't mention that it was messy, um, but I, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but you know, there's lots of stuff going on here. If you look at, uh, again, whether it's sensors, generally sensors, but also from you know, some of your other equipment, you'll see that it's, it's just not uniform in the way that the data comes in. So you might have, there might have been a you know, communications failure and you might not get data for you know, 10 seconds. Again, if you're sampling it every half second, you miss 20 data points. Is that important? Not sure. It depends, again, right, what kind of decision you're making, how much data, and so on. Um, if you look at the start times, this is another common thing that we see. If they are, uh, the sampling frequencies are different, they may start at different times. So, you know, how do you align that data? Um, uneven spacing, same thing. You'll get some, as I said, that do every half second. Others might do it a second. If you're trying to compare apples and apples, it can be challenging. Okay, and then, you know, what do you do when you get a spike? So, so let's say you're in the plant and, you know, some electricity, there's some electricity problem that causes a spike. Is that a spike? Is that actually the process or is it just that there was some electricity issue? So, um, and then, you know, some additional measures that, that you might not have anticipated. This is all of it. It, it. it gets messy, and so we've heard people talk about data quality and data cleansing. This is the kind of stuff that you get into when you start looking at operational data. It's not just, you know, the fact of is the data good or is the data bad. It's how, when you get all of these factors, you're collecting 50 data streams, 100 data streams, thousands for a piece of equipment, how do you put them all together so you can make a good decision? Okay, so just real briefly, this was uh, 
what a customer of ours who gave a presentation at one of our conferences. I think it's a good comment. Um, you know, that everybody's got these systems, but they just didn't have any real time information. Okay, so the current architecture. Uh, I think we talked about this briefly uh, in, in the previous session. What, what do we do today? Um, and I think uh, actually one of the speakers even said it. So historically, people in the plants or management comes to you and they say, we need some data. And what happens? Somebody writes a program to get, to get the data. And where does it generally go? Into the MES system. What's the MES system? Microsoft Excel spreadsheet is where it goes. Right, and so you've got all of these interfaces now. I, I wrote these, uh, again, I say I come out of the aluminum industry. Um, I used to write these years ago, and uh, if you look at a year, I probably got the same data six times for five different people with seven different inter interfaces, okay? And I suspect a lot of you have been in the same situation. Uh, what do you do? I don't know, it, it, it seems to me that you need some way of putting all of this operational data, it's gonna be a lot of data, it's gonna be messy, et cetera, some organization, some structure to it so that people can access it. But you want people to be able to access that single source for the most part so that the data is common and so on. Okay. So what do we, suggest to people, it's sort of a, we call it a five-step process, I guess. Uh, and again, I think we've heard a lot of this, a lot of this uh, similar to what people are trying to do. One is try to take all this operational data down here and put it somewhere. Um, we've heard about cloud, we'll talk about that in our sessions. Is cloud the right place? Not sure. You're talking all this operational data every half second I don't think that's really the architecture where you're gonna put all of that. Um, however, if you can pull all of this together, you can easily set up some dashboards for people. And we've heard some good customer stories about dashboards and reports that they've put out. The third thing though then to start to plan for is, we also heard of these advanced analytics, machine learning, AI tools, start to realize that you're gonna to need to access those. And those can be in the cloud. So you're gonna send some data into the cloud to work on your data for you know, specific applications. The next thing we talk to people about is absolutely, and we've heard it today, take that data, put it over into the data lake, data warehouse, whatever it is, and let those systems operate on it where you can add other data. And then there was a question in the previous session, which was a really good one but you've got to get that back into your operations. And so you've got to think about as you make these decisions over here, how you're going to get that data back in because that's ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to, these models where they learn, where they understand what's going on, that has to get ultimately back into your DCS, your process control, your et cetera. And again, we can talk about the architecture, but the point is to think of that. So there's cloud, there's data lakes, there's all of this, but it, again, it's thinking of, you're gonna use this data, you're gonna use it again, you're gonna use it for multiple types of decisions that you're gonna make, so how do you set up the structure for it? Okay. So when we hear of people talking, they say, you know, I'm gonna take all my data to the cloud, Maybe, maybe not. We think of it in terms of maybe five or six uh, of these types of characteristics. The first is the time frame over which you make the decision. So think of an operator sitting there and the pressure of the pump is going up and he's looking and he's gonna have to make a decision, he, she, in 20 seconds. That's not likely gonna go to the cloud. Some big algorithm is gonna operate on that. That's likely he's gonna make that decision right there. So. You're gonna need that capability to make real-time operational decisions on the spot. Second is the data required, the amount of data. Same thing, we've heard this this week. These real-time dashboards and so on of what's happening, you have a bit of data, maybe what's going on in the process now, but if you're gonna use machine learning, AI, 
Um, particularly predictive models are going to require lots of data. You're going to need years worth of data if you're going to develop a predictive model of some process. Okay, sophistication, same thing. If you're going to use more sophisticated models, it's more likely you're going to need more data. And it's more likely that you're going to need help with those sophisticated models because you may or may not have data scientists, uh, machine learning, AI people on your staff. And then who is using it? Again, what we start to see now are other people other than the process automation, the engineers using this data. So that may then be in a different place so they can access it as opposed to, you know, just the engineers using it, which is again what we saw much more so previously. And then I talked about data quality also thinking of, you know, the, the quality of the data and you know, we still say garbage in, garbage out. It's just now, it's, the data is going to move to a lot more places. A lot more people are going to be looking at it. They may or may not understand the context, the quality of that data. And as I said, context. Okay? So, but, you know, as you're doing this, just remember, right, this is what we're trying to do generally is improve the business. So while it's cheaper, easier to collect whatever all of the data is, it's not necessarily where you start. On the other hand, it's not as expensive and as bad of an idea as it used to be. Okay, so, you know, our, the, the same slide, same customer that I showed before, uh, you know, here's his before and after picture of, uh, you know, they couldn't see a single piece of real-time data, and then, then they could. Okay. Thank you, and uh, we'll move on. 